Hi, I'm Lucky Smoothstone, and welcome to the extraordinary studio of Michael Garman. This is one of the most extraordinary studios in the country, or in the world. I've never seen anything like it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you haven't been at the Michael Garman Studio, Oak, Colorado, in Colorado Springs, you are surely missing something. Take a look. I think a lot of this probably started out, or I, I probably began a lot of this when I was somewhere around five or six years old. My, my dad was a very, very fine amateur sculptor, painter. My mother was very, very um, artistic. Uh, and they passed that on to my brother and myself. And we were always around drawing books and, and carving. And, and I began making these little pipe cleaner men probably when I was around five or six years old, and I'd wrap these pipe cleaners around. I learned anatomy, I suppose, really, from looking at my dad's old, old drawing books and, and, and trying to get these little pipe cleaner characters together. So I kind of just wrapped this, this pipe cleaners around, then I began sewing clothes on my mother's sewing machine, um, uh, made these little cowboy boots and leather cowboy hats, and then later I got into making little plywood forts that had, had jails and, 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 and cannon and all sorts of, um, of uh, neat little dollhouse things on them, but they were, they were little cavalry guys and, and, and cowboys. And I, I love these little, little, little fellas. I think a lot of what is happening right now started a long, long time ago, and I've just never totally gotten out of my childhood. And I don't tend to it now. <laughs> These characters sitting on the bench and in the bars, uh, are they part of your past? Absolutely. They're characters that I've played with and winoed with and, uh, and lived with in various parts of the country, in San Francisco and Philadelphia and all over South America. Um, they conglomerates, they're parts and pieces, types of characters that I, that I, uh, I put together. You mentioned South America. You did spend some time in South America and Central America. Mm -hmm. I, I crossed the border one time in, in Mexico um, with uh, about $30 in my pocket with the intention of, of staying down there as long as that $30 would last. And I figured it'd be around two weeks. And I came back two years later. Uh, I just kept on going all the way through and I learned how to make money down there. I would, I would go into uh, restaurants, um, uh, explain that I was trying to hitchhike my way through the, uh, the Central South America and could I do any odd jobs with the place out, wash some windows for, for a little bit of money. And they would they would always say, nope, there's there's no work, but please sit down and, and here's, some, here's some food. And I started doing that, uh, uh, going door to door to all the um, uh, businesses all throughout. And I made, I made good money. I made $15, $20 a day gringo uh, uh, equivalent. Uh, while I was traveling through there, and I slept in police stations and fire stations, and later I could even um, um, talk my way into sleeping into hotels for free. I never paid for a ride. I enjoyed the life very much. It was it was something that that if you'd asked me what I wanted to do, uh, that would have been it. You know, sit in a truck and, and, and watch the world go by. I, I, I saw a lot of characters. I had to learn to read characters. I had to learn to um, to, to make my way through the, the various situations. So it was a tremendous learning ground for me. It was a very very interesting time. I I uh, that's my PhD. Got a PhD in wine. One of the few around. <laughs>